I know who it is. Welcome back, everybody. Matt Weiner in our Atlanta studio. The 8-9 game in the East region is just about set to tip off Villanova and George Mason from the Colonial Athletic Association. We've been waiting for this tip, and here it comes. Let's uh, take you out there now as the Wildcats and Patriots get to it. Villanova, Malik Wayans has really been playing well, averaging 23 points a game over the last four. Villanova finally healthy. Meanwhile, George Mason, another incredible record, 26 and six. Cam Long is their leader. He can play the point. He can play the two. He is a senior. Let's take a look. The men in black, Adams, Jordan, Cyphers for our first game. And the head coach of the Villanova Wildcats, 21 and 11, Jay Wright. Seven straight 21 seasons, seven consecutive NCAA tournaments. He led them to the Final Four two years ago, but they come in it struggling, limping. They've lost five in a row, but he says finally they're healthy. On the other sideline, 14 years for head coach Jim Laranega at George Mason. His fifth trip to the NCAA tournament. And remember back in 2006, that magical run all the way to the Final Four. Gus Johnson, Lynn Elmore with you from Cleveland, Ohio. And Lenny, as this one gets ready to begin, what should we pay attention to? Well, you mentioned it. One team is hot and the other's not. George Mason won 16 in the last 17. Just lost last week to VCU in the Colonial Athletic Association tournament. But they'll finesse you. They'll shoot very well from any place on the floor. And they are confident. First shot of the game, Cam Long comes up short. And here come the Wildcats. Wayans, just a terrific player. Sophomore from Philly inside Fisher with the left hand up. For those of you watching Texas, Oakland, the game is still on CBS. And Ryan Pearson with the brick on his first shot. And to finish, what to watch for. Villanova, you mentioned it, lost 10 of the last 15, including five in a row. You know, this is a team that is potentially explosive. But they've lost their confidence, and we'll see in this game if they get it back. Watch the body language, watch their eyes, particularly when they face a little adversity. So for Jay Wright, the injuries have really impacted this team. Guard Corey Stokes missed four games and most of another with turf toe and a hamstring. Senior guard Corey Fisher has battled severe tendonitis in his right knee, and sophomore center Muftal Yaru has played only seven minutes in the big... East tournament after crashing to the floor in the first half versus the University of South Florida all playing today. So here's Wayans and what makes him such a special player at least over the last four or five. Well look he's got the ability to score particularly off the dribble get through just about any defense and he's been shooting the ball well from the perimeter. Yaru inside nicely done and Pena with the layup. But more than anything else, Malik Wayans knows how to find guys, and that makes him a tough threat. Here, a ball goes inside. Good interior passing. And Antonio Pena is one of those guys at Villanova who doesn't have much margin for error. They're a smallish team. They play bigger than they are. But they certainly need all of their guys operating maximally. And, and you take a look at Pena. Should have had a chance to finish that for a three-point play instead of the foul, and he misses his first free throw. Again, confidence is a huge factor in this game for Villanova. Second free throw for Pena is good. So Villanova on the board first, out of the Big East Conference. Start of the year, 16-1, and one, and they have beaten some very tough teams this season in conference and out of conference. Well, we've just seen them with their three-quarter, one, two, two pressure sometimes it's token sometimes they'll extend it and go after you aggressively but it forces the opponent to slow down a little bit off the dribble Hancock skip pass here's Cam Long deep counter one of the most decorated players in George Mason basketball history senior Cam Long almost transferred and our Marty Snyder will tell you about that and thank goodness Jim Laranega talked him out of it. 43% from beyond the arc, Cam Long is deadly. And you gotta be able to challenge his jump shots. 
Don't forget, Oakland, Texas on CBS, four networks, four games, all the games in their entirety. This is a basketball junkie's dream, folks. Mason up, turnover, loose ball, Pena, lead pass, Fisher trying to track it down, throws it back in, Pena, right place, right time. Fisher, and a whistle. Looks like he was bumped out of bounds. Even when Villanova does something well of recent note, they've actually turned it into a disaster, and that almost happened there on the turnover. Almost lost it, but regained it. And again, it's going to come down to guys like Pena hitting those shots they normally do, short mid-range jump shots off of the passes. Cam Long picks up the loose ball, Euro step, the kick, Hancock rises. And the rebound going to big move, his second. And as we see, George Mason... There's no hesitancy pulling up and taking a three in transition. And according, Lenny, to the George Mason team, the key for this game, rebounding, because they want to get it off the glass and go. The average over 73 points a game. Fisher, mid-range, J goes down, down. And that's Hi, everyone. Matt Weiner back eyes. in our Atlanta studio. Jay President Wright. Obama is speaking guys, right now. CBS is taking Fisher that at the moment, so we're going to get to uh, double coverage the here. The Oakland-Texas game the kind of finishing up on CBS at the moment, as well as Villanova and George Mason. That start, you're going to hear the audio from the Villanova-George Mason game uh, right now with Gus and Len, but we'll keep the Oakland-Texas picture up for you. And in fact, with them going to break now, we're going to take you a, a full shot of the end of this Oakland, Texas game. The Longhorns led this game by 15 with five minutes to go. The Golden Grizzlies have got themselves back into it, but obviously uh, out of time here. That's exactly what Rick Barnes yeah. just uh, just asked Tristan Thompson. Well, he already has the record, right? Is it, what, School what record. Yeah. School record. All-time NCAA tournament record belongs to Shaq with LSU. I think he had 11. But uh, Thompson with is it seven now? Incredible defensive showing. But he's got to show better judgment yeah. than that. He, the seventh just a moment ago. Did you delve into the record books for Shaq, or is that just from the uh, just have that from the stuff. memory? It's right up here somewhere. Incredible, Steve. <laughs> Steel trap. Yes, mode, my mind is. Zeros being shown on the game clock, and now they put point six up there as the Benson will go to the line and finish things out. Two shots, guys. So for Benson, that's point number 14. Reggie Hamilton led the way for Oakland, came out of the second half. 25 points, 15 in the second half. And the numbers for Thompson of Texas, 17 points, 10 rebounds. Okay, you hear Marv Albert's uh, voice there as Oakland and Texas wrap up with uh, point six left on the clock. That game is essentially in the books for the Longhorns. While Villanova and George Mason are early on there. Gus Johnson and Lynn Elmore calling that game here on TNT. Isaiah once again. Snatched down. Morrison and he puts it in. Mike Morrison Jr. from Palm Bay, Florida. That's the Tampa St. Pete area. Averages seven a game. So Texas beats Oakland 85-81. Longhorns move on. But what a great season for that Oakland squad. Oh, there's no question about it. And again, that's a team that a lot of people expected to upset Texas. You know, young Longhorns first stride in this tournament. All knocked out of bounds. 14-37 to play first half. Mace up of Nova by a point. Cleveland, Ohio, our first game of the day. Eighth-seeded George Mason taking on ninth-seeded Villanova. Close game so far. Gus Johnson, Len Elmore. 
as these two teams meet for the first time in their history. Jay Wright, Final Four two seasons ago. Jim Laranega, magical ride in 06 to the Final Four as well as we take a look at the bracket here in the East. Top of the East, the winner advancing to take on the winner of our next game, a one versus a 16, Ohio State versus Texas San Antonio. Fisher rims out, and the rebound going to Sutton, who just checked in. On the hop, Fisher again, double clutch, count. And the foul for the Bronx native, Corey Fisher. And that's Villanova basketball. Talking to Jay Wright yesterday, he said the reason they've gone into that funk, they haven't been playing the way they normally play, aggressive, with pressure and playing with an awful lot of confidence going to the basket, as you saw there. Corey Fisher is the one guy who can boost the confidence on this team with exploits like that. But again, it's their way that Jay wants to play, and it really is keyed on the defensive end where they're challenging shots and applying pressure. But he likes to see his guys aggressive. So Fisher adds a free throw. One thing you know about New York City guards, they can get to the bucket. Fisher with eight to start Villanova up by a deuce now Mason Harris Bennett in the game along with Mike Morrison here's Isaiah Tate Hancock fumbling the ball almost had it taken away Cam Long on the court as well hey we take a look at this George Mason team unlike teams of the past where they always had a pretty good big guy in the middle whether it's Jay, Jay Lewis or Will Thomas and they play high low and inside out, this team is a little less conventional for Jim Laranega. A lot of high screens, a lot of four guys, five guys out, using guys off the bounce. Hancock off the mark, and Cam Long goes down hard. And he pops right back to his feet. We'll take a look right here. Trying to block out. And you just can't get a guy while he's up in the air going after the ball. And a foul on the inbound pass. Isaiah Tate, great position on the backdoor cut. He'll go to the line. Foul by Cheek. Get all the March Madness highlights, box scores, and the TV schedule for TBS, CBS, TNT, and True TV at NCAA.com. Isaiah Tate. And a sub coming in. Johnny Williams replaces Paris Bennett. Sophomore from Memphis. That last foul by Corey Fisher undercutting the rebounder. It just shows you the effort to which Villanova has to go to in order to block off. George Mason. I talked about the fact that they weren't offensive rebounding the last couple of possessions. They're sending the guards there. Everybody's going to the glass now. Game tied at nine. Both, te both these teams averaging in the 70s. That's considered a high scoring team, isn't it, Lenny? Yeah, I mean, you play in the 70s, obviously, you like to play up tempo. And, you know, with teams right now who are playing under much more controlled circumstances, you get in the mid to high 70s, you're putting points up. Fisher, they swing it. That one knocked out of bounds. Great hands by Luke Hancock. Third team all CAA as a sophomore. So the future bright for this young man from Roanoke, Virginia. Ten on the shot clock. Fisher, stop and start, rise and fire. And hits. Boy, he's got his rhythm. That 10 to 9, it seems like it's gone away Lenny yeah well it was diagnosed back in early March March 2nd on an MRI and you know they've been giving it rest but as you can see right now Corey Fisher the senior says I want one more taste of getting through this tournament and Fisher. he's the igniter Fisher with 11 points to start Hancock and he answers Luke Hancock a 34% three-point shooter. That's his 22nd of the season. And he ties the game at 12. No more for his ability to distribute the basketball, averaging 4.3 assists a game. Yeah, we talked about George Mason being a finesse team with a four and five out. 
you've got to be able to get out on the perimeter and guard, and your weak side has the guard against dribble penetration. So far, quiet start. For Villanova's Corey Stokes has it now, 12-footer. Rims out, snatched down, Ryan Pearson. That's a good job by George Mason against Corey Stokes, who's really a catch-and-shoot guy. Doesn't like to put it on the floor often. Yaru with the rebound, Fisher in transition. Kicks it, Stokes again. That's what he likes to do. And it's good. Corey Stokes, that turf toe and hamstring injury healing up. Nova up 15-12. Yeah, Corey Stokes loves to get those feet ready, catch and release on a quick basis. You want to be able to challenge him, make him put it on the floor, throw him off his rhythm. Now Pearson crosses over and a foul. 11.28 to play in the first half. Villanova shooting it well. Well, they certainly are. Begins with Fisher, but Corey Stokes can stroke it as well. It's not about the name on the back. It's about the name on the front. George Mason. And we're going to go out and play George Mason basketball. One team, one goal. Go out and be the best. Go out and be the best that you can be, that we can be, and do it together. Do it with your friends. Do it with your teammates. Go out and make every sacrifice we need to make to get this done. Let's go. Wow, awesome. Jim Laranega, just such an inspirational coach. And, you know, the number eight seed that Mason earned is the highest in school history and second only in CAA history to the seventh seeded 1986 Navy squad led by David Robinson. And when he talks about George Mason basketball, he's talking about playing solid man-to-man -man defense with an emphasis on help side, understanding his guys aren't locked down defenders individually, but together, you know, they can close off the paint and force teams into low percentage shots. And on the offensive end, utilize the high post still be able to beat people off the bounce, penetrate, kick, and find open shooters. That's George Mason basketball as defined by Jim Laranega to us yesterday. Ryan Pearson with two free throws. Cheek picked up his second foul. 15-13. Now wins. Another jump shot goes down, and he's starting to feel it now. Stokes back-to-back -back threes. Well, Corey Stokes, the advantage he has as a guard is he's 6'6", and he shoots the ball so well off the catch. So normally when he's played by smaller guys, he can just rise and fire. <laughs> Williams, uh, 12 footer on the baseline. 18-50. Villanova. To Wayans. Very patient offensively. Remember, he's been averaging about 24 over the last four games. But he's explosive. Can put together points in bunches. Guarded by Cornelius, playing him to his left hand. Goes that way. Baseline deep. That one off the mark for Cheek. Cornelius. Smallest man on the floor battle for that rebound. He was right down there on the baseline with the bigs. And a whistle, jump ball, the call. Villanova will get it again. Corey Fisher has 11. I'll tell you what, the reason Villanova's gotten off to a fast start is because the catalyst, Corey Fisher, has been determined that he's going to put the ball in the basket. He's looking for a shot, first and foremost. And despite being the point guard, normally you expect point guards to distribute. He's getting himself involved in the offense. James Bell has checked in for Villanova. He wears number 32, freshman from Orlando. You guys, you see that little weave that just gets them Villanova into their offense. I suspect that's just kind of an execution strategy, just to touch the ball two or three times, get everybody focused, and then get it to the catch and shoot guy. Stokes again, back to back to back threes. He has nine, Fisher with 11, and Villanova takes a 21-15 lead. 
you know, that two and three and four passes that they begin their offense with, that's almost trying to establish a pattern. Move the ball, let everybody touch it before we launch into our offensive execution. Hancock. Seems to work. Hancock driving. Cornelius got a good look finally. And the rebound. Yaru with his fourth. Fisher kicks it. Stokes wants it. And he'll go to the line. So Stokes on his way to the free throw line. In the meantime, fear the skies. Face the enemy. Fight for survival from TNT and DreamWorks Television. Falling Skies series premiere this June only on TNT. And you got to wonder if Luke Hancock is reading the scouting report on Corey Stokes. You know, certainly you got to crowd him as soon as he catches it, force him to put it on the floor. But once he puts it on the floor, you've got a little bit of breathing room to back off, still challenge, but not get so close where you can draw the foul on the pump fake. Because Corey Stokes is not nearly as effective off the bounce as he is off the catch. Refs want to take a look to see if he was behind the three-point line. You see to drive the pump fake, and now you back off. Nope, one foot over the line. That's just two. So Luke Hancock picks up the foul, his first. Fourth team foul against Mason with 8.54 to play here in the first half. Now, George Mason doesn't do an awful lot of much else defensively except play that pretty uh, help style man to man. But the way Villanova spreads you out, it's really hard to get help side. And by the time you get there, penetration passes can be made and guys are open. Stokes, an 89% free throw shooter. Jim Laranega did tell us yesterday that despite relying heavily on the man to man they got a couple of other defenses kind of in the vest pocket ready to pull out in the event that they're needed and so far the perimeter game for Villanova has been stellar with Stokes and Fisher both in double figures now you notice he was very careful not to tell us what those defenses <laughs> were This great rotation on that shot, a pure shooter. Corey Stokes reminds me of Trent Tucker, that kind of release when he was at Minnesota prior to going to the Knicks as the sixth overall pick. In front of Clark Kellogg, by the way. Knicks fans were angry with that. Inside, Pearson, lefty, no. Corey Stokes is the guy, to, one of the best catch and shoot guys in the country. Three triples he so far has under his belt. And again, it's all about getting his feet set, catching and releasing, as he is keyed on 11-3 run by the Wildcats. Meanwhile, Ryan Pearson, the junior from Far Rockaway, New York, at the line, second team, all CAA. The foul is called. Eight thirty-eight to play in the first half. Foul called on Pena. See, this is what I'm talking about: spreading the floor, getting a couple of exchanges with the ball, and it kind of gets Villanova in the mood to be able to pass the ball, a cut without it. Fisher pick and roll. Oh, no look pass deflected out of bounds by Ryan Pearson. And let's take a look at the tournament summary. And so far, Big East teams four and two. CAA one and one. You know, the game winning shots. Those were tremendous buzzer beaters and close to buzzer beaters yesterday. Out of bounds, Fisher. The fadeaway. 7.59 to play first half. Villanova off to a great start. Leading at 23-17.
Greg Gumbel in New York with the Southwest Airlines Tournament Update. It is all over on True TV in Charlotte, Michigan on an ending 58-22 run. Creams, Tennessee, 75-45. Bruce Pearl's worst loss in his tenure at Tennessee. Back to Gus, Lynn, and Marty Snyder. And thank you very much, Greg. So what do you think? Was that Bruce Pearl's last game as a head coach of Tennessee? Well, in all probability, the athletic department rescinded their vote of confidence that they gave him early with a slap on the wrist and then some supportive words. But, you know, you got a team in disarray. Psychologically, they're much better than what they showed there. But hats off to John Beeline in Michigan. John Beeline knows how to coach teams in the NCAA tournament. Inside, long, no. Ball tapped around. Isaiah Tate with the rebound and stick back. George Mason clashing the, crashing the offensive glass. And, oh, my goodness. Cam Long is down. Second time he's been down in this first half. We take a look. Just trying to go up for a rebound. And blue blue shirted bodies already lying on the floor. And uh, Long comes down on top of somebody. Let's join the third member of our team, courtside, Marty Snyder. Well, Gus, Monday was National Bracket Day. Of course, everybody's looking for the upset. And George Mason, the kind of phrase is, who's the next George Mason? They take offense to that. They made T-shirts this year for the tournament that says, hey, we're the George Mason this year. They say they can make another run this year. A lot of people think this team compares very favorably to the team that made the Final Four. That's been their slogan. We're this year's George Mason, Gus. All right, Marty. George Mason going to the Final Four, beating Michigan State, North Carolina, Wichita State, Connecticut, Wayans. Yaru rebound and stick back for the young man from the Republic of Benin. And I know you like big man play. He's really developing. He's had some tremendous games this year. Well, physically, he's a specimen. Terrific hands, soft hands, moves well can get off the ground, and he just has to continue to learn how to play. That last play right there showed some patience and strength, but ah. so does that one, anticipation. Another rejection, his second. He's got five rebounds. Here come the Cats, Wayans driving, kicking, Fisher, quick release. Ball batted around, Pena picked up. Here comes Vaughn, left it, he'll shoot it from anywhere. Off the glass from the three-point line. Good action now, Wayans, and an offensive foul. Wayans out of control as Villanova tries to up the tempo. But again, defensively, we're talking about Yaru's many gifts, and one of them is athleticism, learning the game. That's anticipation as well. Watch him come from the help side. Probably could have, should have been there earlier since the ball was on the other side of the rim, but it doesn't matter because he clocked that shot. Muftal's dad is an agricultural engineer. He's one of 13 children, speaks five different languages, Lenny. And nobody argues with his IQ. Oh, my goodness. It's just his basketball IQ is, is ever-growing, and that's going to make him a terrific player. But, again, we talk about comparing George Mason, this year's team, to the teams of the past. And one thing they don't have, though, is that down-low guy who can really get them easy basket. Lands, though, coast to coast with the lay-in, and Coach Laranega needs to talk it over. 5.55 to play in the first half. Villanova with their swagger back. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by Charles Schwab, John Deere, And by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Welcome back as we take a look at the game summary. Well, Villanova getting more shots up, but certainly converting. And the three-point goals is really what's powered him. Corey Fisher with some help from Corey Stokes and the rest of their friends. And George Mason... Just having a difficult time getting the shots that they want. Part of it's because of this full court pressure that slows down their attack. And then the extension of the man to man has really challenged the George Mason perimeter shooters. All right, let's go to Marty Steiner. 
who had a chance to peek inside that George Mason huddle during the timeout. Yeah, Arnie. real quick, Gus. Jim Laranega told his guys, you're giving them too much respect. You need to be in their face, aggressive on defense. You're not playing George Mason basketball. And on defensive end, that's where you're really killing yourselves. Well, he had to like that move by Mike Morrison. Straight post-up move, and that's what I spoke of before the break, that George Mason needs a consistent low post threat. Because there are times when their perimeter shots aren't going to fall. They're not going to be able to get the ones that they want. And when you need easy baskets, you've got to be able to throw it inside, not only to get the buckets, but also force the defenses to rotate, maybe set up for better looks on the perimeter. Wayans with another jump shot. He's starting to get into the act now. Five points for Malik Wayans. Baseline, balls high, Arker short. Wayans rips it. He wants to run. Head up. Penetration to the hole. And a foul. See real stories of human achievement featured on the Buick Human Highlight Reel at NCAA.com slash Buick. And when his jumper's working, that's what makes Malik Wayne so difficult to guard. His ability to beat you off the bounce with either hand, get into the guts of your defense. And if you want to play him for the jump shot, that's what you're going to find. And if you back off him when he's hot, and he has been hot of late, averaging about almost, well, 23 points over the last four games and 25 the last two. And a foul coming up. Maurice Sutton fouled. And it looks like Ryan Pearson picks up his second. And that sends Sutton to the line. He's played in 25 games, and they like the way as a redshirt sophomore Lenny that he can run the floor and block shots. Yeah, he's lean. He's an athlete. And again, just has a refine his skills, particularly on the offensive end, but important to go to him right there because he's got a, a sizable size advantage over Pearson. Put a lot of pressure on the George Mason front line. And of course, yeah, as he grows in, he's going to have to spend more time in the weight room. 61% free throw shooter. Largest lead of the game now for Villanova. Danger zone for George Mason. And again, look at the pressure. It forces George Mason to really walk the ball up. Be very careful as they advance the ball. Cam Long running the point. Finds Cornelius. Pearson calling for the ball in the box. Now facing, spinning. Rejected by Sutton. We told you he could block shots. That's his 27th block of the year. But give that defensive credit to Yaru, who never gave ground, never gave up his position. Sutton posting. Inside, and the whistle looks like a three-second violation called against Villanova. Under four to go, first half. Villanova up by ten. Well, it's been a tale of two seasons for Villanova, and they're hoping that this third season is much like the first. The bottom dropped out for them primarily because they haven't been able to put the ball in the basket and because they haven't gotten to the free throw line. Conversely, they've allowed opponents to get to the free throw line more frequently. Villanova on the five-game losing streak, losing to Syracuse, St. John's, Notre Dame, Pittsburgh, and South Florida. Well, they've lost 10 out of the last 15, and... Again, it comes down to the fact that you look at the injuries, the Stokes and the Fisher to some extent kind of soften them up a little bit. Nice play by Hancock to squeeze down the baseline. Hancock with five. But again, it bears repeating, as Jay Wright told us, when they're not aggressive, when they're not pressuring the ball, when they're not challenging on defense without fouling, you know, they're a much different team and not the kind of team that he expects to see. Fisher with 11 points, Stokes with 11 points, and Wayans with the ball now has five. Fisher really working hard to get open. Isaiah Tate, though, right in his hip pocket. Seven to shoot. Wayans, dribble, runner. And that one saved from going out of bounds by Mike Morrison. Good defense by George Mason that time. Didn't let Malik Wayans get away from him off the dribble penetration. Three rebounds for Morrison as Hancock backs it up. Crosses over, down the lane. And that will be a foul coming up against the Wildcats. Now coming up on AT&T at the half, scores and highlights, the latest tournament news and a Naismith watch presented by AT&T. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. 
Sutton call for the foul. His first. And Gus Luke Hancock going to the basket that time in a clear out situation. Probably illustrates what Jim Laranega spoke of in the huddle that Marty Snyder related to us, and that is we're not going to give any more respect than we have to. You're going to have to play me. You're going to have to challenge me instead of backing away. Hancock with that left shoulder wrapped up. He was walking to, to class, and he slipped on some ice on campus and banged that shoulder up back in December, but he's been playing with it. Hasn't missed a game. Missed one start. And hopefully... They won't use that as an excuse not to go to class in the wintertime anymore. Fisher, rebound, and put back. Corey Fisher, so well balanced when he rises on that jumper. And when he's playing with confidence. You know, there have been stretches when he's shot poorly, particularly in the beginning of the season, but Villanova weathered that. And now he's back on the beam. And he's a terrific creator on offense. And an offensive foul as Cam Long picks up his first. Great defense by the Wildcats. Now, if you're George Mason and you want to play aggressively, you got to do it judiciously, though. You got to make good decisions when you're doing it and not just go headlong into the night trying to get to the basket. I know the coach, Jim Laranega, wanted them to be a little more aggressive, but utilize some discretion. Fisher, Stokes, Pena. Big move and Wayans. Now Fisher. Again on the hop. No look. Deflected. Picked up. Long. Crosses over inside. Leaves it nice. Up and in. Johnny Williams with the strong finish. And when George Mason can stop Villanova and not allow Villanova to set up that pressure. That slows them down. They want to go end line to end line. They're a pretty good transition basketball team. You see the Mason faithful behind their bench in their yellow shirts, shorting their team on. Fisher again. Mason trying to find some rhythm now. Long hesitation and a blocking foul coming up. It will go against Stokes. And Gus, it's all come from the aggressive nature off the dribble, not passing the ball east-west, but dribbling and going north-south. George Mason's got something going right now. 53 seconds to play in the first half. Back after this. Every tournament game is live online on your phone, your iPhone rather, or iPad. With NCAA March Madness on demand for details, go to MMOD. NCAA.com. I, I, I saw you yesterday whip out that iPad of yours. Hey, man, it's just utilizing new technology, and I wouldn't have it unless my wife decided I needed <laughs> it for Christmas. But you know what? You learn that stuff, and you fit it into your everyday life. Unbelievable. And if you don't want to use your iPad, there are four different networks that you can watch all these games on. Four networks, four games simultaneously. Like I said, the fight for the clicker. We had the first day yesterday. I wonder who won the battle. <laughs> so at the long, at the line, excuse me, Cam Long. As you take a look at his numbers on the season, 15 a game, part of the George Mason 1,000 point club, playing in his 131st game. And Lenny, two other Colonial teams in the tournament. Well, Old Dominion obviously got disappointed and had lost to Butler. And VCU, the people who denounced their presence in this tournament, they're making them eat their words. And Shaka Smart had his crew ready to play against USC. And you can expect him to move forward Got with it. that team. Innovation. You're right. VCU wreaking havoc. Shaka Smart, one of the great young coaches in America, 33 years old. Up top, Pena driving. Has it knocked away, out of bounds, and Mason forces the turnover. Fifth turnover of the game for Villanova. Well, it seems as though the double teams and the more aggressive defense caught Villanova by surprise. And it's definitely keyed George Mason. Largest lead of the game. 
for Villanova, 10 points. Mason is led by as many as two. Three ties, four lead changes. Hancock. Isaiah Tate curling, stripped, and a foul. And he'll shoot. Much different approach offensively by George Mason. Early in the game, looking at a lot of perimeter shots, backing away from the Villanova pressure. After Jim Laranega admonished them to get tougher, these guys that start putting it on the floor, getting to the basket, drawing more fouls, getting to the free throw line, which has kind of been the downfall of Villanova during that uh, second half plummet. They put more people on the line and allowed them to get much more easy points. Isaiah Tate, the 66% free throw shooter, gets it first. If you would like to make a donation to help in the ongoing relief effort for the disaster in Japan, log on to CNN.com slash impact. Second free throw short. Yaru with the board. 33-29. Yaru with 11 rebounds in the first half. Fisher back on the floor. He'll run the pick and roll with Stokes. Drives, kicks, corner, Pena. Got it. Six seconds to go. Hancock has to push it. Hancock to the basket. And that's it. Villanova leading by as many as 10 in the first half. They head to the locker room. Up by six. George Mason, a nice job of cutting into this lead with more aggressive play on both ends of the floor. And let's go to Marty Snyder with Jay Wright. Well, Jay, you and I talked a lot yesterday about your team's confidence. Confidence-wise, how important was it to get Corey and Corey involved early? Anytime we have Corey and Corey going, uh, things are good with Villanova. And uh, as I said, they're both healthy. They're playing well. They stepped up the aggressiveness offensively and defensively. How do you answer that in the second half? They did. I, I thought uh, George Mason's defensive pressure the second half of the half was, was outstanding. They, they were really physical and... And we got to make better straight line drives. We're a little bit soft with the ball. Thanks, Jay. We got it. Gus? All right, thank you very much, Marty. 35-29, Nova with the lead at the break. We'll send you to AT&T at the half after this message. You're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by AT&T. Fidelity Investments. And by Buick. AT&T at the half is sponsored by AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network. Ninth seeded Villanova could use a spark. They got one from Corey Fisher in the first half. Five of ten from the field for his 13 points. The Wildcats lead George Mason 35-29 as they try to advance and end a five-game losing streak coming into this tournament. Still ahead here this afternoon, you'll see the number one team from the West, the Duke Blue Devils, the national defending champs, take on Hampton on True TV. That's among the games still ahead here. ATT at the half. Look at what's happening live right now on TBS. Akron and Notre Dame from Chicago. And on CBS, it's Memphis and Arizona from the West Region and the Tulsa venue. Welcome in, everybody. Matt Weiner along with head coach Tom Crean from Indiana. Steve Smith, the Michigan State Spartan. You cold? You okay? Everything else? Oh, I'm just getting ready. I'm excited. Okay, he's getting ready. And Seth Davis from Sports <laughs> Illustrated. Uh, one of the big themes of the day was how Tennessee would react to the swirling controversy concerning their head coach, Bruce Pearl. The athletic director, Mike Hamilton, said earlier this week that he wasn't certain what was going to happen. This leading up to the 8-9 game between Tennessee and Michigan. You saw Tim Hardaway Sr. there to watch his son. All smiles for Bruce Pearl before the game. Tobias Harris... We'll put some smiles on his face as well as he hit the Vols' first four buckets of the game. He was perfect going into halftime, but Michigan changed it up. They started double teaming, and Michigan got whatever they wanted. I was surprised. Man to man, and individually, Tennessee cannot keep Michigan in front of him. Darius Morris just before the buzzer at halftime. Michigan up by just four, so very much a game. Remember that score, because it would change. Darius Morris to Tim Hardaway Jr. on the break. 
And the big finish. Well, as we know, Michigan is a uh, high-scoring, up-tempo, fast-breaking basketball team. <laughs> That's what they're known for, right? I mean, to put 75 points on the board. I mean, I didn't know. I didn't think Michigan could beat a high school team by 30. I mean, they're pretty good, but they just don't run away from teams. Tennessee was completely lost in half-court defense, completely lost in transition defense, couldn't keep Michigan off the offensive boards. I didn't think I'd say that about any team. And it was ugly. Bat by about the middle of the game, and the second half was especially ugly, and uh, Bruce Pearl walking off. Michigan won that second half 42-16. to 16. They win it by 30 after a Tracy Wolfson with Bruce Pearl. An emotional loss out there. Do you think the distractions of the week affected your team? Well, we've not uh, we've not gotten blown out like this all year long, Tracy. And then to uh, try as we might to not have it be a distraction, I think it uh, it was no excuses. I should have been able to uh, coach him up better uh, to the point where we could have stayed focused. Give Michigan credit. Michigan played very very well. Um, and uh, you know, I thought in the first half we should have gone in at halftime with a lead. We played well enough to be able to have that lead. And then uh, in the second half, when they started making shots, they scored three of the first four possessions. Things began to fall apart. Do you think you coached your last game for Tennessee? I hope not. I think uh, the body of work uh, speaks volumes. I'd like to go through this stuff with the NCAA uh, as, a, as a family and get through it. We, we, we got into it together, and hopefully we can get out of it together and, and uh, be accountable as we, as, we, as we move forward. But uh, I love Tennessee, and I appreciate the opportunity they gave me to be their coach, and I hope I can be their coach for a long, long time. Thanks a lot. That was Tennessee head coach Bruce Pearl a short while ago. And, of course, the backstory on this, he already served an eight-game suspension uh, from the NCAA for recruiting violations, not to get too specific into those. But this past week, the athletic director, Mike Hamilton at Tennessee, said on a radio station that uh, he wasn't certain what was going to happen. And that opened up the door for all sorts of speculation as to Pearl's future. Now, in the wake of this loss, is that the nail in the coffin? Well, it's, it's not looking good, and that's the first time really through this whole situation that Bruce Pearl has indicated his belief that it was affecting the team and that the team was playing poorly because of it. And it's instru uh, instructive to me that in this situation, it was his athletic director uh, that he's referring to the distraction. So in other words, when Bruce Pearl does something wrong, when Bruce Pearl gets suspended and isn't there, uh, he said, you know, our players have been focused and we've been not making it a, a distraction and they played well enough to get into the tournament. But uh, there is a rift now, it's clear, between Bruce Pearl and his athletic director, Mike Hamilton. What he's saying there when he says, let the NCAA play itself out, that hearing is in June. He wants to try to get to the hearing and try to let the NCAA make its decision and try to survive it from that point of view, whereas the administration, I think, is moving very quickly to the point where if they let Bruce Pearl go now, that will mitigate the penalties that come from the NCAA, and losing by 30 like this absolutely does not help his cause. I should, I should correct myself. It was the SEC that uh, handed out the sanctions right. against Bruce Pearl. They're awaiting word from the NCAA. Coach, I'm going to turn to you because you know the dynamic between a head coach and an athletic director. Read between the lines there for us, if you will. Well, I hate to on, on many fronts, but I, I'll just say this. I don't think you can put the game on the athletic director, I think, at all. And, and that's not to take one side against the other. The bottom line is in the first half, Tennessee was not really playing Michigan the way that you probably should play them. They were allowing Evan Smotrich to come in and take three-point shots. The, the whole key to guarding Michigan is you have to understand that everybody they put on the court can play. They can shoot. And uh, they are a very good transition team. I thought there were a couple of adjustments that John Beeline made in the second half. He went from more 1-3-1 one, one, to a 2-3 zone. And they doubled Tobias Harris, who was really hurting them in the first half. They doubled them or doubled him when he went into his dribble. But a 30-point game, I don't know if I can put that on anybody. The players are in the NCAA tournament. It's a chance of a lifetime, even though some of them have been there before. There's no way that you come out and you don't play with the energy and the will and the determination that you've got to have inside of that game. Does that indicate anything to you is it from a player's point of view? You know, I think from a player's standpoint, you would love for these kids to come out and play with energy. But I think that it does become a distraction for them because you have kids with other people talking about, should you transfer? Is he leaving? Is he going? And I think that because you're a young kid, some at 17, 18, 19, they don't handle it as well. But I'm like with you, Coach. I look at it as... Or X's and O's. Let's talk between those lines. I thought Tennessee didn't have a plan for the outside shooting. They also didn't have a plan for Tobias Harris getting double teamed. Michigan, give them the credit. Let's talk about Michigan, the positive. They Absolutely. came out and outplayed Tennessee mm -hmm. by 30 points without making a free throw. And out-rebounded them by 10, which yes. is something they haven't. Tobias Harris is the one that looked like a veteran in that game, and that's about it.
Largest loss for Bruce Pearl at Tennessee. And by the way, on a much lighter and odder note, Michigan wins this game without a made free throw. First team to ever win an NCAA tournament game without hitting a free throw. So hard to believe. Hard to do. You think just by accident somebody would fall into you and you go to the foul line. Super freshman Jared Sullinger getting set to go on TNT at 4.30 Eastern time with Ohio State. And Duke is already on the floor against Hampton. No sign of Kyrie Irving yet, but as you see, it's uh, just more than four minutes into this game so far. Miles Plumbing had a couple of quick early baskets, as we've talked about all day. And that's him on the follow, crashing the boards. And you can see that's it. Watch, they're going to have a huge advantage up front. They might have a little bit of a size advantage in the paint in this one. That sometimes happens in those 116 games. It's all about the Plumleys for Duke. Kyrie's great, but the Plumleys are the X Factor. AT&T at the half is sponsored by AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by Applebee's. Miller Lite. LG. And by the Jeep Compass. Welcome back to Cleveland, 35-29. Villanova with the halftime lead. Moments ago, Jim Laranega met with his Mason squad in the locker room. We were passive. That doesn't work. Get your mind right to go after these guys offensively and most importantly, defensively and on the glass. We've got to defend, rebound, and run much better than we did that first half. Get yourselves ready. Get your shirts on. Get a drink. Let's go. Coaches. So, Coach Laranega, defend, rebound, and run. And uh, that's the mantra for the second half. You don't get any simpler than that. Play aggressively. And towards the end of that first half, they did just that to close the gap. And really, the trend for Villanova, they have to watch the free throws. George Mason's 9 of 12 from, be from the line. And you take a look at the first half stats, Villanova winning this game from beyond the arc. Certainly on the boards, doing a nice job of plus 7. But it's the free throws that Villanova, Villanova has to be careful of, opponents' free throws. In their 11 losses, opponents average about 26 free throw attempts per game. All right, this game is brought to you in HDTV by LG Life's Good. So two double-figure scores for Villanova in that first half. Two Corys. That's right. Fisher had 13 on 5 of 10 shooting. Stokes had 11 on 3 of 7 shooting. 3 of 6 from the three-point line. As you take a look at Cam Long, who took two pretty major falls in that first half. And Pearson. So we start the second half. Also keep in mind that Yaru had 11 rebounds in the first half and two blocks for Nova. So he's playing at a high level after coming off that injury in the Big East tournament. Mason with the ball long off the dribble 16 foot high arc or no. In you with a rebound. That's what Villanova needs to do. If G George Mason wants to play aggressively Villanova needs to keep their dribble penetrators out of the paint. Stokes Wayans. Pena. Big move. And Fisher. Stokes around the corner. Block. Picked up. Yaru. And he's fouled. Let's check in with Marty Snyder. Well, Gus, Jim Laranega also told his team a lot what Lynn was talking about in the first half. Those first five passes that Villanova throws in their offense, he said, that's lulling you to sleep on defense. Don't buy into that. Reset yourself halfway through the shot clock and be aggressive on defense. Gus. All right, Marty. So Yaru at the line, the sophomore from the Republic of Benin, fouled by Morrison. And he's a 66% free throw shooter. And as we mentioned, Lynn, he's had some Big time games. 15 points, 10 rebounds to go with the career best four blocks versus Pitt. In a 57 54 loss back on February 12th. Had 18 in a win against Marquette. 8 of 10 from the free throw line. Villanova persisting in that 
pressure apparently token right now but George Mason in the back of their minds knows that that press can become very aggressive and that's why they're taking special care as they bring the ball up the floor and it's slowing down their attack long how about this Kyrie Irving just entering the game for Duke left hand Pearson no Morrison couldn't keep it alive Fisher in transition leaves it Stokes rises and the rebound to Cornelius what do you think about Irving I'm surprised but I guess that that's the kind of game where he can be inserted and play some minutes to start to get his feel for the game back baseline Pena I think that's a little far out of Antonio Pena's range. You don't, don't want to shoot just to jack up shots. Cornelius just throwing that one at the rim. Right now, George Mason looks a little rattled. Well, part of it is the Villanova defense, as I mentioned. They're getting in front of guys and not allowing them to get into the paint. Certainly, they're on each side of the lane, and the shots have been relatively off balance. Not the kind of shots that George Mason utilizes when they're normal right now they're not normal I think the Villanova defense has had an adverse effect on the way they go to the basket Stokes on a switch Hancock guarding five to shoot Fisher fade away that'll say a lot about meanwhile Villanova didn't look that that good on that offensive possession Jay Wright told us yesterday at practice everybody's coming up to me and saying you must be miserable how hard things are but he told us I'm living the dream we'll be okay Morrison well we talked about the difference in this game was Villanova's accuracy beyond the arc and the two Corys for the most part mixed in a little Malik Waynes but they've been getting open shots and this is probably what Jim Laranega spoke of the fact that his guys were too passive on the defensive end not getting out and challenging is there a six for 14 Villanova is from beyond the arc. So Mike Morrison at the free throw line. Coaches say he's a character guy. Great in the locker room. Keeps everybody loose before the game. Singing. Laughing. Missed a couple of free throws there. Morrison a 41 percent free throw shooter. So it's been a struggle for him this season. George Mason will get it back. Cornelius has the potential to be an explosive score. He hadn't really been looking for his offensive game so far. Hancock down low. Pearson picks it up. Underneath and Fisher now with the basketball. Yeah, that pass is a little too low. Forcing the fumble and allowing Villanova to recover. And again, a quick shot. Unlike the first half, and Villanova moved the ball around. Too Morrison! Oh! Big fella! Too and many quick shots for Villanova, and that quick shot leads to a fast break. 16.43 to play in the second half. Will this be an energizer for George Mason? Down by six. The East region is a beast, folks, when you look at some of the teams here. Winner of this game will take on the winner of Ohio State, Texas San Antonio next. The bottom of the bracket, West Virginia and Kentucky already matched up a rematch of last year's East regional final when the Mountaineers stopped John Wall and DeMarcus Cousins. Yeah, what they did was invited them to shoot jump shots, and that was a game that couldn't shoot straight in that particular game. But this Kentucky team, far different, much better jump shooting team. Maybe not as dynamic. In West Virginia, Bob Huggins' team is always gritty defensively. Deshaun Butler, what a star in that game for West Virginia. 37-31, Nova. Stokes, three threes in the first half. Hancock guarding him closely. Now big move up and in. All right, that was a nice move despite having a defender Morrison on the ground and you're worried about coming down on him maybe twisting an ankle but your had the concentration that time Villanova moved the ball a couple times before taking a shot he has six points and 11 rebounds two block shots 
make that 13 rebounds, excuse me. Eleven rebounds at halftime for Yaru. Ooh, there's a carry right there, and it's almost an offensive foul on Morrison on the screen. 39-31, Villanova. Back after this. And let's take a look, Lenny, at some past tournament darlings. Well, Gonzaga and Butler, they've always been in that lexicon as Cinderella in the NCAA tournament. And the George Mason folks want to know who's this year. It's George Mason. They say they are. But Gonzaga and Butler are right there as well. You take a look at both of them. Yesterday, they both advanced. And they're on their way to being this year's Butler and Gonzaga or this year's George Mason, depending on your perspective. And I tell you, that next game, Gonzaga, BYU. In the Southeast region, Chimmer for debt. He can give you 50. Lenny? Well, he can. He struggled the other day at 30-something on 10 of 25 shooting. Hancock with the rebound. Here comes Mason. They've trailed by as many as 10. One of six to start the second half. This Villanova defense has been very, very good. It's also been very cagey. There are times when they'll be passive, and there are other times when they'll get out and get after you. Back door, Cam Long. But if they're going to get after you, you've got to pressure the ball. You know, it does you no good to be aggressive and then passive enough to allow passers to find guys on the alley-oop. Long with seven points. Six-point game. Fisher guarded by Cornelius. He's been playing him to his left hand the whole day. Stokes popping out. Let's it go. In and out. Long. Rake it and take it. And a foul. That's a blocking foul on Stokes. Hey, we talk about the passivity of the Villanova defense. Take a look here. Look how much room Hancock has as he just comes off the screen and ultimately gets that semi alley oop below the rim. But you've got to pressure the ball, not allow that pass, particularly from that distance, to have clear sight to where he wants to throw it. Stokes picking up the foul is second, second team foul against Villanova in the second half. Mason has one team foul. Isaiah Armwood, the sophomore from Baltimore, checks in for Nova as Hancock prepares to throw it inbounds. How do they get some easy points? Everything seems hard for George Mason right now. Well, it's all about rebounding, first of all, and then be able to kick it out. Villanova doing a nice job, though, of one, scoring, and secondly, being able to get their defense back and set in the paint. Long, working hard, reaching foul, coming up. It will be against Cheek. And for instant analysis and highlights of every tournament game, log on to SI.com. Cheek picks up his third. Third team foul against the Wildcats. And that sends Cam Long. They call it a shooting foul to the line. And if you look at the scores at the top, Notre Dame winning today every game folks every game on four different networks I was talking to my mother this morning and she said I don't know where to start I said mom <laughs> you should start with me I'm your son say. yeah but if there's a better game someplace else son exactly <laughs> that's what she said how'd you know and foul because mom's illogical oh like my that. goodness and sometimes me. Well, we talked about the issue that Villanova's had during that uh, 5 and 10 last 15. A lot of times putting opponents on the free throw line, as we see, quick jump shot by Antonio Pena. George Mason already 16 free throw attempts. And during the 11 losses this year, opponents have averaged 26 attempts from the line. So Villanova's got to be able to play defense without fouling. Hancock fouled by Pena and he'll go to the line it seems like this three-quarter court 
I don't know, necessarily know, Lenny, is it a zone or is it a it's press? It's a zone. It's one, two, two, and it should be pressure. But again, they're passive sometimes, and other times they'll extend and get after you. And it seems like this, this zone is really, it hadn't forced a lot of turnovers for Villanova, but it's taken George Mason completely out of their offensive rhythm. Well, that's the intention, to be able to slow them down, force them to think about it, and you see how much care they take in getting the ball over half court instead of pushing it up the floor as they would like. Three fouls now on Pena. Hancock at the line. And that's the other byproduct of putting your opponent on the line too often. Obviously, guys are getting in foul trouble. And, you know, up front, as far as effectiveness, Villanova's kind of thin. You've got Yaru and we got Pena. Hancock with nine points. Lead is six once again. Wayans Fisher in the backcourt with Stokes, Pena, and Isaiah Armwood. And that's what you get, Isaiah Armwood, a lot more slender, not as physical as Antonio Pena. Stokes, one dribble, too strong. Hancock with a strong side rebound. Mason trying to get some rhythm now. H Hancock crossover. Oh, baby! Double clutch and one. And Gus, you see that time? Villanova did not employ that one, two, two, three quarter mm. pressure. And Hancock got a running start to the basket. And that's why you put it on him. 13 10 to play, second half. Here comes Mason. Continuous coverage of the Division I Women's Basketball Championship begins Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on ESPN2 and ESPN3.com. For more information on game times and matchups, go to NCAA.com. Gus Johnson, Len Elmore with you. Cleveland, Ohio. This is the East Region. George Mason out of the CAA, 26 and 6, 16 and 2 in conference play. They won the regular season crown against Villanova. Jay Wright squad out of the Big East. First meeting between these two teams all time. George Mason. Listening to their coach Jim Laranega far more aggressive on the offensive end in the second part of the first half and coming out here in the second half. Hancock adds a free throw. Three point play. Mason trying to climb the mountain. 41 38 Nova. Let's see if they tighten up or if they can continue to play loose. Stokes quiet in the second half. Yaru got to be strong with it. Stokes deep air ball. Here comes Long. He'll fire if he gets it. Inside Morrison left enough. Picked up Isaiah Tate. And the ball hitting the bottom of the backboard, so George Mason will hold on to it. To scramble underneath on the drive. Good save, but again, under the basket. When I say good save, just getting possession of the ball. But once you get possession under the other guy's basket, you might as well eat it. Because that could have turned into a disastrous moment for Villanova. Pearson, Hancock, Isaiah Tate, Cam Long, Morrison. Here's Hancock! Luke Hancock taking it over. And we've seen Yuru block some shots. He would have been better served going after that shot as opposed to trying to take the charge. Hancock, a nice job of eluding the stationary Yuru. Hancock, 13 points, three assists, two rebounds. Now Wayans looking for Fisher. 10 to shoot. Turns. Backs it up. Seven to shoot. Crosses over. Pena. Got it. Great creativity by Malik Wayans. Yeah, and an excellent execution by Antonio Pena. That, in part, is also what Villanova has missed on a consistent basis throughout this season. Pena hitting that 12-footer, which he's capable of doing. Isaiah Tate rimming it off. Loose ball. Wayans can't hold on. Tate takes it inside. Here's it. Mason getting to the 50-50 balls now. This is how you measure effort. This is how you measure intensity. 
George Mason, their players with that look in their eye now, as if they're saying, okay, Nova, we figured you out. Patriots counterpunching. Fishing. A lot of dribbling by the Villanova guards. Pena. Wayans lost it. And we'll stay right here with three to shoot. You talk about George Mason counterpunching. They took a few in the gut, but they know how to give it back. Luke Hancock with the underhand layup and then finding down low. And it's a good finish. Greg Dumble in New York with a couple of tournament updates for you. First of all, over on CBS in Tulsa at one point, Memphis led by 10 in the first half, but Arizona has come back to grab a three-point lead at the half. Lamont Jones on the steal and the layup. Meanwhile, on True TV in Charlotte, Duke is all over Hampton. Kyrie Irving has made an appearance seven minutes in all. He has two free throws to his credit. Duke in charge. Gus? Thank you very much, Greg. So the winner of that Duke Hampton game taking on the Michigan Wolverines our game right here Villanova turning it over George Mason starting to ratchet it up land on defense and Jim Laranega said at halftime that that's where it begins he said most importantly you know increase that aggressiveness on the defensive end and his team hasn't disappointed but the flip side of it is Villanova once again Opponents free throws those numbers are starting to play a role here George Mason now 12 of 19 From the line Villanova far less free throws just seven of nine And as we mentioned in 11 losses Villanova's opponents have averaged 26 free throw attempts per game so Big key to this game is Villanova playing defense once again without fouling Mason with a chance to take the lead. Remember, they've trailed by as many as 10. Cornelius, high dribble, kicking it. Baseline, Tate. Here comes Wayans now. He's got Stokes on the wing. Fisher to the bucket and a foul. On the pass. Well, you took take a look at the first half and second half by the two Corys. 24 points in the first half, zero here in the second half as George Mason has done a much better job of bodying up, pressuring passers, and taking Villanova out of the rhythm that they found in the first half, particularly Corey Stokes, who needs that rhythm, who needs to be able to catch and shoot to be effective. Pearson picks up his third, third team foul against Mason. Now Fisher off a of screen. Villanova taking some bad shots. Fisher again reloads inside and a big young fella. Maurice Sutton jams it down. He has three points. And the Cats go up by three. Yeah, and any offense Villanova can get from Sutton as a bonus as they go back to employing that one, two, two. Again, the slow George Mason down. The last time they didn't employ it, Luke Hancock with a running start. Got all the way to the rim. Cornelius. Oh, in and out dribble. And that's dangerously close. Morrison's high screen to be in a moving screen because he's leaning. Pearson inside. Leans up. No. And Stokes clears it. His third rebound. This is what we saw from Villanova to begin the game and throughout much of that first half. Couple of exchanges out front. They get a little settled down, trying to use some clock. Wayans and a blocking foul. That'll be Pearson, and I believe that's his fourth. And what a huge lift Maurice Sutton can give his team if he can just find himself around the basket, catch cleanly, and finish. As you said, that's an added bonus. And here on the foul, you can see the slide over by Pearson. Didn't have both feet set on the ground in legal guarding position. So Malik Wayans, sophomore out of Roman Catholic High School in Philly. And as you mentioned, Lynn, he's been putting up some good numbers. At 24 against South Florida. 
As you take a look at the subs, 27 against Pitt, 19 against St. John's, suffered from some back spasms this year. It looks like everything is going well for him now. 47-42, he has seven. And a timeout call. 9-0-1 to play second half, 47-42, Villanova. Two thousand six was a Cinderella season for George Mason and route to the final four Mason knocked off three former national champions Michigan State North Carolina and Connecticut and the dream came to an end in the national semifinal versus Florida losing that game 73 to 58 in Indy as Florida went on to win the national championship. Gators beating Ohio State that year. Greg Oden, Mike Conley Jr., Daquan Cook. Joe Kim Noah, Al Horford, Corey Brewer. The leaders on that Florida squad. All three great pros right now. Six turnovers for Mason. Wayans, stop and start. Morrison with the rebound. Good defense by Long, utilizing his length. Hancock. Long inside, and another great finish by Johnny Williams. Third time, he's finished strong at the hole. Wasn't Six points. Pretty. Wasn't pretty, but it was effective. That's all you need. Fisher and Yaru ready to check in for Villanova. Right now, Stokes, Cheek, Pena, Wayans, and Sutton on the court for the Villanova Wildcats. And looking for Stokes. Hancock staying close to him. Wayans, jumper. And Morrison with another rebound is seven. And again, George Mason aggressively denying where Villanova wants to go if they're forcing Wayans to go one-on-one. -on -one. Isaiah Tate picks it up, double clutch, flip, no. Wayans on the move. Cheek almost traveled down the lane and off it. Great job by Mike Morrison sliding in and taking the charge. 6.45 to play, folks. 47-44. And welcome back to Cleveland as we take a look at the game summary. Well, three-point shooting for Villanova is holding up despite the fact they haven't hit one here in the second half. 0 for 4. And really what it comes down to is the aggressiveness of George Mason has gotten Villanova probably a little bit out of sorts right now. They're forced to go one-on-one -on -one as the guys that they want to go to, Stokes particularly, certainly Fisher, have been covered very nicely by George Mason. And Malik Wayans has found himself having to go one-on-one. -on -one. This is where a, a reliable low-post presence is missing from both of these teams and it hurts them because they can't throw it in there force the defenses to contract and find easier ways to score cheek has picked up his fourth foul for villanova nova with 16 fouls mason with four. Oh my goodness johnny williams george gervin will be proud what a finger roll Talk about playing with some confidence right now. But you talked about the low post threat. Well, he started in the corner. <laughs> but nevertheless, backed his man down. And that's all he did was single row. 47-46. Villanova. Fisher, baseline, pull up. Oh. The Bronx, folks. That's how you do it. That's right, when you're in danger of having to leave the court because somebody else has winners and you don't want to leave, those are the kinds of shots you got to drain. 
He has 15 right at his season average. 49-46, Cam Long. Baseline, Johnny Williams again. Yeah, out of his range. But take another look at this play, folks. Well, here he is in range. Backs his man Pena down in the spin. The pirouette. And just the finger roll right there. No help side. As Villanova defense is kind of collapsing a little bit. Ball's all the way in the other corner. Somebody should be in that paint right in front of the rim. Nobody there. And Williams took full advantage. Meanwhile, Pena called for his fourth foul. And that sends Mike Morrison to the line. Remember, folks, he came into this game as a 41% free throw shooter. They need him now. And he can't get the bounce. Came into this game shooting 41% from the line. I think he's going to leave shooting 41% from the line. If he doesn't get better rotation off of that shot and soften it up. He's 0 for 3 today. 5-17 to go. Three-point game. Here's Fisher. Guarded by Isaiah Tate. Fisher with a screen. And Cam Long can't save it from going out of bounds. Villanova will not only get the ball, but a new shot clock. TNT this June, they're turning the courtroom upside down. This much fun. Well, it should be illegal. Franklin and Bash series premiere this June only on TNT. And the way Jay Wright has got his guys set up in their offensive scheme, looks like he's going to ride the two quarries. They've been going 1-4. But here we're going back to kind of weaving and passing, cutting. Just again, throwing a few passes, one to lull George Mason to sleep, but I also think to kickstart the offense and the ball movement. Baseline Stokes. Got it! That's a big-time jumper for Corey Stokes. 14 points, his first basket of the second half after scoring 11 in the first. Meanwhile, a foul on Stokes. Well, as a result of the movement, all of a sudden now you get quick penetration move. The defense collapses and you kick it out to the shooter in the corner. Look at Stokes changing sides. Penetration starts to come on that side. And watch Hancock try to help, and Stokes make him pay. Hancock missing the free throw, 52-46. At this point in time, I would think that uh, George Mason might want to step up their defense a little bit, extend it a little more. Start to look for more deflections. But Villanova will use up all of this clock as we move forward. Stokes again! And Morrison with the rebound. Stokes, one for seven in the second half. Cam Long out of control. They tackle him. And Mason gets a timeout. 3.53 to play. 52-46, Villanova. First, they brought you real Coke taste and zero calories. Now they're bringing you the most impressive NCAA experience known to fans. Get in the game at CokeZeroSocialArena.com. Let's join Marty Snyder. Well, Gus, Mr. Elmore called for it a moment ago. Jim Laranega told his guys on the bench, speed up the tempo a little bit, look for them to go into a quick trap on defense. Gus. All right, so at the free throw line, Hancock. Yeah, with three minutes and 40 seconds left, trying to cut this deficit to four. You know, a little bit of a surprise. You've lulled Villanova into thinking you're just going to play half-court defense. Try to be opportunistic. Get a chance to jump him. If Hancock makes his second free throw, you're only down four. Get a chance for a quick two. Hancock's parents, mom, Van, dad, Bill, watching their son have a terrific game. Hancock, 15 points. Three assists, three rebounds. There's a full court pressure. Stokes and a foul. Hancock putting his hands on him. Not exactly what Jim Laranega wanted. He wanted to trap. He wanted to be assertive. But that's only the fifth team foul against Mason. Wands put the ball in play. 
Fisher. George Mason has one more foul to give. The teardrop for Fisher. 17 points for Corey. And we mentioned it before, several plays running the 1 4, allowing Fisher full freedom with the ball. Jay Wright's going to put it in the hands of his seniors, man. He's going to say, You guys take over between he and Corey Stoke. And this Villanova team looking more like the team that started the season 16 and 1, scoring great victories over the likes. of Tennessee Temple inside no loose ball Morrison tracks it down new shot clock for Mason and he slides his pivot foot Wow big mistake right there again the double team between Sutton and Yaru kind of caught Caught him off guard, Marson off guard. But in the end, still an opportunity for George Mason to play aggressively. Again, you, you ne don't necessarily want a foul if you can go after, but they still have a foul to give. Only five team fouls for George Mason. Fisher, wow, what a dribble to the basket. Kicks it out and an offensive foul. That's careless. I know you want to be aggressive. I know you want to draw the defenders, but you got to recognize where you are on the floor. And Morrison does a nice job. This time he got there. Talk about Jay Wright's squad. Those starting 16 and 1, they beat UCLA, Cincinnati, Louisville, Maryland, Syracuse. And because of the injuries, a collapse long. And he dribbles it out of bounds. Now, don't forget the winner here will play the winner of our next game, Ohio State, in this place. Here in Cleveland, a little over two hours away from Columbus, and it's jam packed. A lot of scarlet and red. In the audience, Wayans. Look at the quickness, gets head and shoulders past the defender and avoids the trap. And Wayans will pull it out. 2.25 to go. Time right now on the side of the Wildcats. Two possession game. Mason needs a stop. Shot clock under 10. Here's a high screen. Fisher will shoot it off the dribble. And he does. Loose ball. Rebounded by Long. Two minutes to play, folks. Tate for three. Pure. And Mason cuts it to three. Timeout. 154 to go, second half, 54 51. Well, it's just like Jim Laranega dreamed of it pushing the ball up the floor, finding an open man in the corner. And Tate was about three feet beyond the arc and didn't draw iron with that shot. And again, quick three now puts George Mason back into striking distance where he can play some solid defense now. As we reset it for you, 10 team fouls against Villanova. Five against Mason. Wayans. Oh! Threw it up. Pena. Great play to recover that basketball. Wayans inside. And a foul. And that will send Pena to the free throw line to shoot two. Let's take a look at the Capital One Cup impact performance. Corey Fisher, 17.6 assists. And he's trying to take the game over here down the stretch. And that time, nice dish to Antonio Pena on the push. Pena, 71% free throw shooter, one of two from the line. Third foul called on Long. Well, one of the things about Villanova is they are an outstanding free throw shooting team. As a team shooting about 76%. Pena second free throw and he missed a pair. Here we go, folks. 144 to go. Mason. Down by three. Hancock back door. Pearson.
54-53. Notice Villanova playing Hancock going below screens and no hedge. And it gives him again an easy opportunity to find the roll in the middle of the paint. Don't think George Mason has ever given up. No quit in the... Welcome back, one point game with Mason at the line, shooting one. As you look at the reset, Villanova with the arrow, each team with one timeout remaining. Gus Johnson, Len Elmore with you from Cleveland, Ohio, downtown. Stokes picked up his fourth foul, sending Ryan Pearson to the line, a 70% free throw shooter. Second team all CAA. And the junior has a chance to tie it. And, uh, and let's go back to the point that was made and I made earlier about not having a reliable low post presence. But if you can get your forwards to cut an established position down low point blank, you're in good shape, especially if you can deliver the pass and Hancock did. And Pearson did the rest. Four ties, four lead changes. Nova is led by as many as 10. Backdoor Fisher. Inside. Oh, he almost threw it out of bounds. Great play by Wayans. And a foul. That's a tough foul. Woo. But an even riskier pass as Yaru didn't even see it. It was intended for him. And an excellent save there by Wayans. That could have saved Villanova's bacon for the rest of this tournament. Yaru, perfect from the line today, two of two, 66% free throw shooter. Morrison picks up his second. So the sophomore from the Republic of Benin. And he missed it. Wow, Mason with a chance to take the lead. 105 to go. High screens going beneath the screen, not thinking Hancock's going to shoot it. Hancock blocked. Great job, great help by Yaru. But that's burned him before, going below the screen and not pressuring Hancock. Fortunately, Yaru is there. Inside, Pearson pivots. No! Big Morrison. Mason with the lead. Fisher. And a timeout call by Villanova. 54.7 to go. Mason on an 8-0 run. Hustling, fighting, scrapping, jamming. Two-point lead. Welcome back as we reset it for you. Two-point game. George Mason taking their first lead since the 15-10 mark of the first half. Leading seven to six now Villanova out of timeouts with the basketball Well in that huddle I guarantee you Jay Wright went over the Varied options that have worked for him on the offensive end One of them is the one four where you have four guys across the baseline have Corey Fisher or Malik Wayans With the ball now first of all obviously Villanova has inbound it, but if they get a chance to push is George Mason has picked up, picked up full court. I would attack if I had numbers. So Wayans, Fisher, Stokes, Pena. And big move on the floor. And here we go with high screen eventually. Fisher kicks it out. Stokes, 17 to shoot to the basket. Stops. Corner. Fisher. Oh, he's fouled. Man, behind the three-point line. Villanova totally out of sync there as George Mason defended the shooters well. And that was one of those three point shots. Watch the lower part of the body just making contact. Got a little bit of the piece in the hand, but it's the contact that knocked Corey Fisher down. And Jay Wright just nonchalant. Corey Fisher at the just line. Like this practice. He's one for one today. He's a 78% free throw shooter. Shooting three.
Well, you talk about again uh, an opportunity as the George Mason guys hoping to live the dream once again. We talk about opportunity for George Mason to make a stop there without a foul. Second free throw good for Fisher. Now a sub coming in. Defensive substitution. Mo Sutton. He's 6'11. Game tied at 56. Fisher. One more for the lead. Remember, George Mason has one more timeout. Jim Laranega has a chance to talk about this last possession. Three in a row. 57 56. Nova. Shot clock turned off, folks. Game clock at 25. They're on their feet. Here, hand count. Oh! He had it for three. 59 57. Wyatt. No in the front court. No timeouts for going over. Wyatt drives to the oh! bucket. No, Pearson. Rebound. And jump ball. Villanova will hold on with 8.5 to go. Down by a deuce. No timeouts. Well, I'll tell you what. All afternoon, they've been playing behind screens, not respecting Hancock's ability to knock it down. Here, he didn't need a screen. It was just a step back and a bury. So Jay Wright signaling for his guys to come over. They're going to talk some things over at the scores table. The officials going to the monitor. And that'll give both teams a chance to huddle up. Great for Villanova because they don't have any timeouts left. Oh, you see the drive right here. Boy, there's a lot of contact that could have been called one way or another. Pearson rebounding on the seat of his pants. And then one, got to take a look at the clock and see when the timeout was actually called, or when the tie-up, I should say, was actually called. No timeout was called. Right now, 8.5 on the clock, 8.9. And that was a great opportunity, great opportunity for Villanova to get a chance to discuss. And if I'm Villanova, again, you got to get the ball inbounds quickly. It's going to go to Fisher or Wayne to create. Take a look. Pearson with the rebound. Now, when is the official call a tie-up? That's the thing. There it is, 9.1. And that's what the clock reads right now, 9.1 seconds to play. Plenty of time to get it in bounds, get it back at the top, unless there's something, some miscommunication, an opportunity to get an easy one on the baseline, which I would doubt. Mason up 59-57. Villanova, no timeouts. In the corner, Stokes fires off the top of the backboard no loose Hancock front court Morrison Mason point George Mason three tenths of a second to go they involved it and now they'll do it George Mason making the statement we are back and ready as they come back from a 10-point deficit to win at 61-57. So the bracket in the East, folks, just got hotter. George Mason, dramatic win. Coming back, they await the winner of the Ohio State Buckeyes and road runners from Texas, San Antonio. Jim Laranega, the magic is still there. 61-57 the final. For Len Elmore and Marty Snyder, Gus Johnson saying so long from Cleveland. Tournament games continue live now on CBS, TBS, and True TV. A huge win for Jim Laranega and his team. How did your kids get back into this game? I have no idea. <laughs> Come on now. We, in the first half, we didn't look at all like ourselves. At halftime, I talked to them. We needed to be more aggressive. And in the second half, we came out. We called the play. Didn't even run the play after the half. <laughs> so, you know, I think it's the atmosphere. The adrenaline is flowing. Everybody is, is trying to play well. 
Uh, but eventually, we became aggressive at defense and offense and rebounding. And of course, Luke Hancock made a huge shot at the end. All week long, you talked about respect. Did you earn that respect today? You know, I think our league deserves the respect. And I'm happy for our team, and I'm happy for our conference. Colonial Athletic Association is a very good league, and we're happy to represent them in the big dance. Congratulations, Jim. Thank you.